Hello, my name's Naomi. I'm one of the pastors here. Great to be with you today. And as you listen to the reading today, I wonder if there are certain words that stand out to you. When I read a passage of scripture, I like to think, what are those words that stand out to me as I'm listening? You might have heard words like rejoice or gentleness. The Lord is near. Pray. Peace. And these are all very good words for us to take time to reflect on and meditate on because all of these words have meaning and they're words that give us reassurance. But today, I'm not using those words. I'm going to be focusing on the word anxious because I think that I'm probably in good company when we think about who has to deal with feelings of anxiousness. Now, I do want to point out that there are different ways that we describe anxiety and sometimes we talk about anxiety when things are stressing us and worrying us and we talk about anxiety in those things. There's also anxiety uh, when people are dealing with um, quite serious forms of anxiety in their day and they need some extra help with medication and that sort of thing. I'm talking today about the everyday variety of anxiety where we can feel stressed or a bit overwhelmed by things. Because I, I find when I feel anxious, I notice it's often in those times when I'm feeling like I'm under pressure or that things are out of my control. And I notice in those situations, if I'm honest, I'm not rejoicing. I'm not responding to people, particularly with gentleness. I'm not feeling like God is close or feeling that peace of God. And to be really honest with you, when I'm feeling anxiety, I don't always think first about going to God in prayer. One of the things that gives me anxiety, one of those things that makes me feel like my situation is out of control, is mice. <laughs> I'm so glad I was feeling vulnerable there, but I'm feeling there might be some people, although you might just be laughing at me, let's hope you're laughing with me. Um, mice are a big deal for me. You would think I'd be at an age where I would know now how to deal with this anxiety. I've had this anxiety for most of my life. It's not just mice. It's any animal that I can associate with mice gives me anxiety. And it's something that I know I have and I have to deal with on a daily basis. Now, recently, uh, over Easter, my husband and I, we decided that we would take my grandson, he's two and a half, to the Meadows Easter Fair. And we thought that would be fun, that we said it was a bit of an adventure. And it's one of those times where I like to trick myself into thinking I can go into any situation without feeling any anxiety whatsoever. So we're walking into the fair, and I remembered I'd left something back at the car. So my husband said, that's okay, he would go back and get it for me. And I said, that's fine. And I thought, what can I do with my grandson while we're waiting? And what did I see? I saw a petting zoo. And I thought, wouldn't he love that? Wouldn't he love to go in and, and touch the animals? Why would I think that? That's, you know, really, looking back, that is crazy talk for me to think that. Anyway, so I don't want him feeling the same fears as me when it comes to animals. So pay the money, we go into this animal enclosure. And the first thing I think is, oh my goodness, this is a lot smaller than I realised, and there's a lot more kids in here than I realised. So I'm trying to think, how do I uh, uh, stay calm and have my grandson have a good time? So I take him to this little lamb that's in a, in a pen, and I say, look at the sheep. How about we, you know, touch the sheep? And no, he didn't want to touch the sheep. 
there's a pig roaming around uh, in the pen. And I thought, I, I can be brave. Look at the pig. Do we want to touch the pig? No, he wasn't that keen in pigs. I see chickens. Chickens make me think of mice because we know that mice go into chicken coops, so I can't go near the chickens. And he starts walking over to a box. Do you know what's in the box? Actually, it's not mice, it's all right. Guinea pigs, which is like the cousin of mice. And I, he wants to pick up one of these things. And, um, and I'm looking and I, I want to be brave. I'm having this whole struggle in my head. There are kids who are holding them, like they're out of the box. They're, they're, they're touching these things. And I, I say, ah, oh, like, could you help over here? But see, I'm being very, could you just help us uh, pick up the guinea pig? And um, the kids were very good. They were help, trying to help my grandson. But he was a bit like me in that he, re well, no, he was braver than me. He tried to pick up the guinea pig, but he kept dropping it, okay? <laughs> so now I've got this dilemma because, I mean, I don't want to touch the guinea pig, but I don't want it squashed. I don't want it hurt or anything like that. And I'm, like, I'm starting to get hot. I feel like there's so many people around us. Everyone's looking at us. I think, what do we do? I'm like texting my husband saying, where are you? Like, <laughs> how long does it take you to go to the car? Where have you stopped off? Come on, come on, come on. I'm looking. I'm, I'm like trying to stay calm. Let's try and look at something else. No, he wanted to pick up the guinea pig, kept dropping them. Finally, I see my husband in the crowd. And I tell you, I'm like pushing my... <laughs> It, it sounds awful. Pushed him aside, <laughs> ran to the gate, and I said to my husband, you get in here, and I've got to get out and get some fresh air, because that is as good as it gets for me. I tried really hard. <sighs> Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What makes you anxious? How do you respond when you're feeling anxious? The reality is we live in an anxious world. There are plenty of things going on right now that make us anxious. Just turn on the TV, go to your social media, scroll through, and there is something that is going to make you feel anxious. I suppose the good news is that we have a lot of resources that can help us with anxiety. Go to any bookshop. You can see the self-help Area. Go on to Amazon. You can see a whole range of self-help books, things that will help you to get through anxiety. You can go to Spotify. You can listen to all sorts of people discussing what it means to be anxious and how to deal with it. You can listen to songs that sing about anxiety or how to stay calm. You can um, get a nap. There are apps that help you to breathe, to stay calm and not feel so anxious. You can go onto social media. Maybe some of you are getting adverts for herbal remedies that are going to help you when you feel stressed. We're not short on help when we feel stressed and anxious. But I wonder how many people who are feeling anxious would think, I should go to church. You see, I actually think for some people the opposite is true. When people experience a shift in relationships, in, in commitments, in life circumstances, they actually find it harder to go to church. They might decide, this is probably a good time for me to just to pull back, pull back from anything that I'm committed to at church. I'm going through a crisis, so I need to just bunker down for a bit rather than be at church. You see, we can listen to people who give us a framework for dealing with stress and anxiety. 
but how many times do we stop and think, hang on, what's our biblical framework for when I'm feeling stressed and anxious? I mean, what is your faith response when you feel stressed? Where is God in your anxiety? Is your first thought to pray and turn to God or is it to run, to hide, maybe even self-medicate? If as followers of Jesus, we don't turn to Jesus in our anxiety, then why would anybody else? You know, there's a saying, if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. And we are experiencing anxiety in our world like no other time. That doesn't mean there's been no other time in history where people haven't felt anxious. Because there have been plenty of anxiety-inducing experiences in our world. And we read the stories in the Old Testament and the New Testament of people who were fueled by anxiety. The ancient pagan world was anxious. We see this when we see the number of gods and idols, the goddesses that they built. And then they had to try and keep them happy if they wanted to have good crops, if they wanted good health, if they wanted to have a good day, they needed to keep these idols happy and look out to anyone who upset one of those idols. In Acts 17, we read that the city of Athens was full of idols. There was an idol for every situation. They even built an altar for the unknown God because they didn't want to upset something that they didn't know about. Now, the Apostle Paul would go on to tell them that that unknown God was the God of creation, that he was the God of the universe, that this God, our God, wasn't a God that just shuffled people around like pieces on a chessboard, but this God was a God of love. This God offers forgiveness and grace. This God is welcoming and offers shelter in the storm. And I'm not really sure that we've changed much since then. Because we still have people in our communities that want to be in control in control of their destinies, in control of what happens to them. And they believe that they can be the master of their universe. Because we still have people who will bring out the lucky charm, the lucky socks, those lucky earrings. Because we don't want to jinx the situation. <laughs> We still have people who think they're smarter than the average person, so they get on the internet and they go down these rabbit holes to try and find out information that nobody else knows about. We still have people who want to cover all their bases. They'll see a psychic, they'll say a prayer, they'll hang up a crystal, they'll throw salt over their shoulder, touch wood, and keep a Buddha in the garden. We see an anxious world where people keep their shutters down, where they park their cars behind the roller door, where people will keep their eyes down or averted rather than saying hello on the street. And we see people who are grouping together to keep other people out based on religion, on politics, sexual identity, age, experiences. We see people hurting and being hurt. We see protests, conflicts, war, 
and we see a world that is struggling in darkness. As the church, we are God's light in the world. We are God's light in the darkness. So how do we respond to the anxiety in the world as the church? How do we rejoice? How do we respond with gentleness? How do we proclaim that the Lord is near? How do we help people not to be anxious but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present our request to God? How do we help people experience the peace of God that transcends all understanding and to know that God will guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus? In Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, we read, Anxiety weighs down the human heart, but a good word cheers it up. A good word encourages our hearts. We all appreciate words of encouragement, and we can encourage each other with our words. But the best word I know is the word of God. If we spend time in the word every day, Think of what difference that would make to our church. When we spend time in the word, we are encouraged and we are reminded of God and what God has done for us through Jesus. Being in the word reminds us it's good to rejoice. And when we think about rejoicing, we can sometimes think about, How am I rejoicing? How am I feeling happy today? What am I doing? But I think that Paul would have been encouraging the church to rejoice, for the church to celebrate together so that people could see followers of Jesus being glad together, that they have something to celebrate when the world feels hard. And as followers of Jesus, we can celebrate, we can have fun. We saw recently how much fun excess had over Easter, and that is so amazing. But we can also be sensitive to others and praise with gentleness. Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all. Our weekend services, our Thursday service, are ways that we come together to celebrate and it might be a gentle celebration of praise and rejoicing. But we come together because we have something to rejoice in. We rejoice that Jesus has changed lives, that Jesus is worth celebrating. It reminds us when we come together and we worship together that God is near See, our services are celebrations of what God has done, what God is doing, what God will do. See, it's an opportunity for us to be refreshed so that we can be ready to face the world again when we leave here. And it's an opportunity for us to invite people to join in the celebration, to hear what God has done and to experience the Lord and rejoice. And of course, together as the church, we pray. Feeling anxious can be a reminder to us that it is time to pray. It's time to pause, to be still. We read in Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. See, prayer and being still helps us to stay calm when the world is feeling anxious. Prayer helps us not to get caught up in the chaos around us, but to focus on God, to center ourselves on Jesus. And together we can be a calm and non-anxious presence in the world. 
Pastor and author Craig Rochelle writes in his book, Winning the War in Your Mind, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Worrying and toxic thinking will change your brain and move your life in a direction you don't want to go. Prayer changes your brain and moves your life in a positive direction. You see, this is as much for the church as it is for individuals. Because we can just focus our attention on what's wrong with the church and we'll find it. But we can also put our attention on what we can celebrate in the church and as the church. What can we encourage? And we'll find it. So where do your thoughts take you when you think about the church? Does it go to, I'm not real keen on the coffee? The lights aren't really my thing? The sound's a bit loud, a bit soft? Who's in my seat? Or do your thoughts go to, who am I trying to make friends with? Who am I encouraging to grow as a disciple of Jesus? Who am I encouraging and celebrating to see being baptised? Where are those opportunities for us to be able to plant more churches, to make a positive impact on our communities? What do you pray for when you pray for our church? when you pray for our community. Prayer reminds us and helps us to trust God in all situations. When we don't pray, we're turning ourselves away from God. But when we do pray, we move towards God. We trust him more. And Paul says, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When we pray, we can experience that peace. When we pray, we remember that God is with us and that we can respond and celebrate loudly and with gentleness. When we pray, we are a blessing to our community. And as the church, when we put prayer into practice, we are the blessing, not just to our community, but to the world. We will always live in a world that causes us stress, and anxiety, but we can also experience peace when we know that God is with us. And so God is here offering us his comfort and his compassion. He's not like the idols in Athens that we have to keep giving offerings to and keeping him happy, because God already knows us. God already loves us. He knows about the things that we worry about. Those big things, those little things. You know, he knows about my mice phobia. And he may have a good laugh about it when he sees me struggling, but I think he also says to me, it's okay. I know your worries, I know your stress, I know your anxieties, I know that they're real to you. And that's okay, because I am here with you. And God doesn't just say that to me. He says it to you. He says it to the church. He says that to our world. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are here, that you know us and you love us that there are no worries that are too small for you. There are no worries that are too big for you. That, Lord, we trust you with them. We bring them before you now, opening ourselves up to you, being vulnerable before you. We thank you that you take them seriously. And we pray also for our world that is struggling and drowning in anxiety and worry. Help us as your church to be that non-anxious presence, that we can point people to you so people will know that peace that passes all understanding. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.